Hey, it's the man himself. How you doing, Mick? Baji, I am so good. Do you know what? Me and Tanvir were just talking, yeah? Yeah. And he was just saying to me, he was just saying, you know, thank you for so, thank you so much for doing this interview. I said, what are you talking about? I said, it's a privilege for me, for one of the 80s icon, one of my heroes, yeah? And you're, you're thanking me. I thought, ah, no way, man, no way. Apache, many thanks for coming on to Radio Sangam. I know you're a busy man. You was, um, before we get into your music and stuff, you was in Spain, weren't you? Yeah, no, I'm in Spain currently still. Are you still I, there? I came out here after the like six months lockdown from kind of March to August, and I came out here actually for a week. And uh, every time, I mean, because you know, the lockdown is supposed to be lifted out in October, so I was supposed to come back. I work in a college. I'm a teacher. I'm a musician. There's no work, Mick. <laughs> there's no college. Oh, there's no wow. gigs. There's no academy. So you know what? The sun's shining, and um, <laughs> you're, you're, there you go. And um, uh, and so every time I call, I said I'm coming back. They say, "Don't come back. There's nothing to how, come back." To. <laughs> you know what? How lucky of a person are you to be in Spain <laughs> with the weather as it is? And so while you're over there, I mean, I've seen your pictures and stuff, and some of the things that you're doing, going to the market stall, and you know, doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that. God, how lucky of a man are you to be able I mean, to be over there? I mean, the truth is that you know. Um, I, 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 I ship my studio out over here. I do have a little place out here. It's only two hours away. So people, if you want to come over, you can come and see me. It's only two hours away. and you're in Really? <laughs> Listen, I'm going to South take you up on that. I'm going to take you up on that. Come and see me. And then I finish my album out here, basically. And so, right, okay. Uh, so it's not just sitting in the sun. I've been working hard, just like at home. But, you know, I'm stuck in the studio. I mixed it over September, October. We just released it November nicely, the 27th. Nicely, nicely brought in there. Nicely brought in. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole purpose of us today is to talk about the album and talk about the awesome, awesome tracks. I must admit, um, I've not mis listened to the whole album, but the two tracks I've listened to, it took me back. It really Wait, took me back to the 80s and all the music that you was doing back then. And we've, we've discussed this before about, you know, how popular the two genres of music became back then and is still very much in people's kind of like faces and how it just gels together. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very important. I mean, it represents more than music. You're, you know, it's uh, obviously we come from Birmingham, represents multiculture, the sounds, the culture mixing together so, so well. So it was a reflection of that culture. And just, and just to, you know, people always talk about, I like reggae music and I've said it for years and, you know, we mix it with the culture and, and, the, and the sound works so well. But going back, going back just for, if people are interested, when, when my parents came from Punjab, Jalandhar back in the, you know, the start, end of the 60s, I was born in 67, uh, my parents went to work every day. Both my parents went to work every day. And there was no school till I was five years old. So I was dropped off at the nanny next door, Holly Road, Hansworth. <laughs> and she looked after many kids. And she was, she was Jamaican. So she, wow. she was Jamaican wow. from, the Windrush, from the Windrush era. Because obviously a lot of people from wow. the Caribbean, a lot of people from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Yeah, yeah. And, and first of all, it shows me that my parents obviously had no problem with black people and the black culture. It's because I'm yeah. there eight hours yeah. a day, man. Look where I learned my language. Look where I learned the culture, the sound, the music. Wow. So first wow. five years, that's very, very important. So later on, it wasn't just music. It wasn't just music. It was the understanding of the culture. And, I, I, you know, you brought back a, a bit of a memory there because I remember growing up myself in the 70s, early 70s, and my grandma, I always thought my grandma was white because same situation, mum and dad used to go to work and they used to leave us with this, our English grandma. And yeah. I thought she was my gr real grandma, you know. That's right, and I yeah. think maybe that's why I just love fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's but, true, yeah, it's I mean, true. The, the, the generation before, they used to work together. The communities used to work together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Apache, talking about the album, tell us more about what we should be expecting from this new album that you've just done. Okay, I've got to tell you, Mick, it's, it's, it's going to be my favourite album, I have to say. I don't know why. Every track is special. We don't do albums anymore. It's just like nine singles, bangers, club bangers. I don't know what songs you've heard, but there's a very special song with Hunters. Uh, it's yep. called Trip to, yep. Jam yep. Trip to Jamaica. Beautiful. Then in my large, I'm out to Jamaica. And the rest of it is in, in, I mean, I've been to Jamaica many times, so it wasn't hard to write the verses, but I gave him some different kind of style of verses and he loved it. And um, the, just two, the, you know, 
he's a legendary voice from the from the industry so it was great to do work with him and it's a special special song that song's already been played in jamaica it's already because right. you know it's a wow. great reggae song so look out for that people there's a great song with roach killer that he could produ he produced the song it's called look my way he produced it i wrote the song but he's you know he, he's 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 there as a vocalist as well and a rapper from canada called blitzkrieg um and another indian reggae artist from canada called cat eyes so all of us are on that song beautiful song beautiful song if you haven't heard that listen you like that song and then i did a song with what, in the, you, what still motivates you to create <laughs> such beautiful amazing music even to this day you know you've been in the industry for such a long time what's that buzz is it the buzz of you know just being in the studio and just being yourself to be able to create what you create yeah, I mean, I, I love music. You know, I share, it's not just a song. I share my life, like I said. I share my childhood. I share my dreams. I share my emotions. It's a part of my life, right, that music. So I'm never going to leave it. That's the inspiration. Inspiration is life. If you see mm. situations um, and you like them, you can celebrate them in music. Yeah. If, if you don't like them, if something affected you, you can speak about it to inspire other people. Maybe don't go down that road. There's a very special song on the album called uh, Stronger produced by a young artist, a young producer from, from London called Jay Productions. He's done three songs on the album. That song, I want to feel stronger each day. My faith, it leads the way to a place where I do pray and give thanks for life, I say. I mean, you know, I've always shared my emotion, try to help and heal myself. So that's the inspiration. And then, you know, we love music, you know, and music really gives me the platform to speak to you, yeah. speak about other things. So it's a platform that inspires me. Music and, is one thing. And we talked about this last time about that, yeah. you know, how on the edge sometimes, you know, you are with regards to some of the topics that you used to pick back in the day. And you're still doing that today as well, because it is kind of like sometimes knife edge sort of issues and things that you're talking about, which is very different to some of the other, other kind of like artists, because you, you, you try to make it very, very real. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's very important to make it real. It's very, very important to, you know, raise subjects and have a, you know, like arranged marriage. I took myself yeah. through an arranged marriage. I celebrated the culture. I said, you know, girl from Jalandar and whatever, whatever. But the last line of the song said, but when is the right time to tell my girlfriend? Yeah. So these kind of lines is just an opinion from a British Asian. Just throw it in the equation. But at least I'm still celebrating. People may not even get that line, but they're still celebrating yeah. the song. So be clever with songs. I don't really hear lyrics now. What are we talking yeah. about? You know, what, who's, and even the videos and things the same, you know, but, you know, there's things going on. There's things going on in the world. There's things going on in India right now as we speak. Uh, I encourage people to write and be clever, be inspiring, as well as have fun. I give yeah. you Boom Shakalak, which is fun, but I give you a range yeah. marriage. I wrote about AIDS. I wrote about caste problems. I've written about, you know, anti-knife, anti-gun, alcohol abuse, anti-drug abuse. Come on. That, well, that's what music is for. Reggae gives me that. Reggae yeah. gives me the consciousness to yeah. be able to speak. My love of Indian music and culture, which is arranged marriages and all the things I'm talking about, but reggae gave me the consciousness to speak. We don't do that in Indian music. Mm. It's either celebration, jubilation, or yeah. love songs, which is okay. It's not a problem. Yeah. The world well, changed. I, 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 I suppose the world that's changed. What, I suppose that's what the difference was when you came onto the scene. And I think that a lot of my era needed that as well as well as you know the pangara and the bully bully and all the rest of the stuff to find our culture find our faith again and find yeah. where we belonged but yeah. i think that what you did was you, you like i said before you made it very real in the topics that you were talking about at that time yes it was, it was very important to me because no one no one was talking about anything mm. so so who, who could you speak to it wasn't an open culture to speak about you know, Banda is drinking too much or is this or that. So I shared it. I shared it with music. I didn't, I didn't really think that it was going to be, it wasn't a formula for success, you know, writing a song like Arranged Marriage. I wasn't thinking about the charts, was I? But he went into the British charts. It was number 16 in the British. I was top of the pops and all these programs. So he took my little style and people resonated with it. People started finding their identity through music as well. So it was very important for us, the first generation. You know, my but, parents but came how, from India. But how real are those things that you talked about then the, now they're you know, all real it's everything is real everything is real yeah everything is still relevant 
What I'm saying, there's many more issues that have come, whether it's, you know, terrorism, whether it's, you know, what's going on in the world, whether other yeah. things that, you know, the, you know, three people were shot in Birmingham last week. You know, the mm. young, young people are not using the music the way I used it. You have to yeah. use to inform, yeah. to inspire, to be happy. But let, that's what artists do with music. So let's not just keep it one way. So let's let, 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 let's talk. Let's speak. So, so it's it's the word that you're trying to get across, isn't it? That that you know, through music, we can tackle so many different issues. Yeah. You know, about life, about you know, community cohesion, about faith, about this, right. about that. You know, and and I think that's the beauty of of your music that that it it, it kind of like brings all that together, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the, um, that's the aim of my music. You know, sometimes you get happy, sometimes you're sad. Yeah. You've got to think about your culture, you've got to think about the industry. I've got to think about my reggae audiences and black markets around the world. Yeah. Sometimes I don't want to hear Bhangra, so sometimes, yeah. you know, straight up reggae albums. Same with the Punjabi and the you know Asian market. Sometimes I want to hear straight up. But I balance it. I will give you something yeah. special. I would, I will, as well as sharing that and giving you something different, contributing to those industries. So people so should I, think about all these so things. Sorry. So, with regards to the, the the new album, how long did it take you from from start to finish, from the idea, the concept to the finished product? I think about three years. I've been working on the album. I'm always doing music, and the, in the lockdown, I just accelerated that process. I said, "Let's get it together," because we weren't. There's no gigs. There's nothing happening. Um, so, three years. It could have. It would have been taken. It would have taken longer, but there was nothing else. That, there was nothing else to do. So. Um, it would have been next year to tell you the truth. Right, but, okay. Yeah, so so it was a good time. Um, and I'm celebrating 30 years this year. We've wow. been on the BBC One show. I don't know whether you saw the BBC One show with the Academy. That was on oh, yeah. the summer. Yeah. They filmed before the lockdown. I've got the Lynx TV commercial running, which has been on every day in, in, in England as well. So look at that, a bit of blessing, yeah. but still the platform to be able to speak. So yeah. that's, what it's, that's what it is for me, <coughs> the platform to be able to help my Academy, my young people and to keep doing the good work that I'm doing. So it's more than music. So it represents a lot. And, and, and I follow you on Instagram, and I see some of the work that you're doing with the next generation of young people. And it's amazing what you're doing. And, you know, the creative arts, the industry, which have had a bashing lately because of yeah. all this that's going on, you know, it, it brings out so much in young people. Yeah, that creative industry, and it's such an important. And uh, for me, it's a shame that it's not used more in schools, and it's not, you know, in the curriculum. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. They should use music a lot more in the lockdown and in the COVID. They haven't paid any importance to the musicians or the industry, and not just the Asian industry. The whole of the right across the board. What have they done? You know, what have they done? Uh, me as a musician for the first time, no income. And yes, Apache Indian, whatever, but you know what? I'm a teacher as well, so no, no work. So I'm, I'm officially unemployed. But for all the, all the artists out there and all the people suffering, they've left us to it. But yet I know that music, through my academy, brings people together. So we're bringing people together. They're enjoying their lives or tackling problems together because of music has brought them together. We got on the one show because of music. I'm here today because of music, crossing cultures and genres because of music. And like you're right, it should be in the curriculum. They've taken yep. music out of the curriculum. Yep. We used to have music in the curriculum. It helps with autism. It helps with conditions. It helps with mental health. And so these are the kind of things so I work issues. with. So yeah. I teach now, I teach in the college, and one of the aspects of the course I teach is music, but mm. music to the young kids. We don't need to get technical. So it's, I'm teaching in a course called Ignite My Career. So in 10 weeks, I will change your life. So let's do some music, let's do some, um, sport brings people together. There's not yes, enough it, emphasis yes. on sport. Yeah, yeah. So it brings yeah. communities together from different, you know, you may not even speak the same language, but you're yeah. in the room together. So yeah. we've started co cohesion. Yeah. We've started there because, and then. Because sometimes all it needs is a start of a beat. That's right. That beat can be escalated into so many different beats from yeah. Africa, from South America, from all sorts of different continents. You bring those beats together, all of a sudden, someone can say, I own that bit, I own that bit. But what they're really doing is they're coming together. They're coming together. That's right. It's all about coming together. The music is second. Music is what does it, brings us together. And together, we make a difference. We make a difference in each other's lives. We make a difference in the community. We make a difference in the country. And we speak. It's important to speak. Our culture doesn't speak enough neither. But, you know, when somebody walks through my academy door, what am I assessing? Are they a star or a footballer or a singer? I'm assessing mental health. Have they eaten? Yeah. Have they slept? Do they need a, just a place to sit? Do they want to be quiet? Do they want to sing and just be forget the world for a minute? Yeah. It's just a place like home. 
a religion, yeah. like, like, like a, a, a temple of all different cultures, it's, temple of music. It sounds like you've created a safe space for, yes. for young people. Yeah. Yeah. In and a college. Yeah. And sometimes that's the most important thing that young people, especially now, is what they want, is that safe space from what, what's going on in that big wide world out there outside those doors. That's right. They need a safe space. They need love. They need care. They need a place to speak. They need a place to be left alone. I mean, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for youth clubs and all the mm. community helped me and go black, Asian, white, everyone used to help each other. Like you said, you know, the white nanny, the black nanny, it does this again. And it was so enriching. We're missing that now. And uh, kids are suffering, quite frankly. Kids are suffering. They're falling through the cracks. All my kids would have been on the streets or yeah. they have drugs or violence because there's, there's nothing for them. I've turned and their I've, lives around yep, in that few yep. years where it's hard. As an ex fifteen year youth worker working on the streets, yeah. I can yeah. I can I can relate to everything that you said there with you know with, with regards to what's going on with young people and the importance of having that safe space and just being being themselves, being able yeah. to and, be and, themselves. And while they learn from us and we inspire them, they inspire us. So we have to learn. You know, the, the, world has, the world's changed. Languages have changed. Attitudes have changed. So we have to learn from them, meet them halfway. Stop saying the youth did this and they can't do that. Give them a chance. Give them real opportunities, but meet them halfway. Even yeah, parents, them meet, the your half, them the meet your children halfway. Meet your children halfway. Parents parents don't even know the kids are maybe doing drugs or maybe involved yeah. in something under their nose. So you come halfway because now we're talking about life and death. We're not talking about hold your ears and say sorry. So, and, and, got, yeah. and through this new album, are you then also then touching on some of that stuff again in, in, in this new album? Yes, I am. So you have the, the fun tracks, but I'm talking about there's a song called How Long. How long yeah. have I been telling you to feel strong and you know, big up your culture? And how long have I been telling? And it goes into that old kind of you know, ragamuffin Apache Indian again. Yeah. There's a song called Stronger. You know, I want to feel stronger each day. So there's inspiring songs as well as the fun songs. It's all there. That's why I like albums. Because one song doesn't sum up your emotion. Yep. Everything's there well, like a journey. So nine well, I, great songs. And you know, hope they I'm, heal. I'm, when you were talking about, you know, you were in the industry about 30 years. Yeah. I was at my mum's the other day and she was saying about if you don't get rid of your cassettes and you don't get rid of your CDs, <laughs> I'm gonna throw them all the way. And have a guess. And it's honest to God, it must be the universe here. Have a guess what I came across. I don't know whether you can see this. Wow. Wow. How the, a promo that was sent to me when I used to be on another radio station. It says exclusive three track sampler from the forthcoming album Real People. You got Rag Raga, Independent Girl, featuring Milkeet Singh, and India. And I wow. found that. Can you believe wow. I found that? Wow, that's how, incredible. How, how, how bizarre is that? And, and um, media, it says media moguls. And it, that's does, right. it does, yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And it's really, and, really, really weird that, uh, you know, Tom V said, oh, by the way, you know, Radio Sangam's got the opportunity to uh, interview a Apache Indian. And I thought, how bizarre is that? That This is just, <laughs> found that in a box, which was upstairs in the loft. And um, that's called, that's, don't throw that away. That's called synchronicity. We're in sync together. It, yeah, uh, definitely seriously. I, do you know what? Somehow or another, I want to get this back to you. Okay, great. Great. I'll, 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 find, I'll find a way uh, yeah. because I'm sure that this can be part of your history and stuff. And I thought, you know what? I need to give this as a gift back to you. Thank you very much. But don't throw away the CDs and cassettes and vinyl. Very, very oh, good. No, yeah, no, very, definitely not. I think I've them. got an album somewhere or another. I just need to find them. Hopefully mum hasn't, uh, mum hasn't uh, what do you call it, <laughs> from memory. Um, but let's talk about a bit more about the album and stuff. So... When does it get officially get released? When can people get out there? When can they start, you know, buying Apache Indian, your new album? When, when is everything happening? No, no the, the, it's been released. Right. It was released on the 27th, just a few days ago. Okay. And it's available all over the world. So iTunes, Spotify, go wherever you have to go. Nine right. songs. And I'm telling you, you know, we've got Hunters, we've got Roach Killer, yep. we've got Blitz. We've got a very special track from India, a song called Freedom. It's produced by a guy called Daniro Ash, some Hindi rap. Uh, wow. Beautiful Hindi vocals from a girl called Shilpa Shirok. And uh, English vocals from an uh, uh, Indian artist from Gurgaon, Delhi, called Chezin. So, wow. wicked song. I mean, absolute banger. Hip-hop kind of reggae. Um, so, you've got a bit of that on there. And... Um, 
as I said, the young producer from London support him too. There's a young guy from the Academy on the album. There's a song called Together As One. Um, he's never released a song and he's on this. So he's excited. He's very, very how excited. Old, how, old, how old is he, Apache? He's, tw he's um, 23. He's never right. released a song, but he's a lovely kid. He's such a good kid that he got signed from my <laughs> Remember, I've got 30 years of contacts from Hollywood to Bollywood, so I'm trying to use my contacts as well. He got signed a year ago to a company in America through my contacts. Right. He's been going there for six months at a time. His life changed, and now he's on the album because he can sing. He just needs a break, right? So I'll put him on a yeah, reggae yeah. song. To sing. Yeah. John Rogers is his name. He's from the Academy. He was featured on the one show. Between the one show and all the things that he's done and then being on the album that's released worldwide, yeah. his life changed. So, wow. And he's been signed to a company in America from the Academy. So look at that. Real work, real work, Mick. Absolutely fantastic. Apache, what more can I say? Do you know what, Radio Sangam, we love you at Radio Sangam regardless. Thank yeah. you very much. And, you know, and, you know, once all this is over and stuff, um, we might, uh, we, me, Gesser, uh, we might come out there to Spain and uh, just chill with you out there, I think. I think that's <laughs> going to be a better idea, actually. I'm going to be coming back very, very soon, and I want to come into the Absolutely. station. I know you guys oh, do a lot of things for the community. Yeah. So if I can contribute to any conversations or any debates or anything, I'm, I'm there to support. If you're having a Christmas party, Mick, call me. Uh, listen, uh, <laughs> if I call you, honest to God, I, I will get to meet you because all my, mate, all my mates will be wanting track after track after track after track off you. So <laughs> why, well, why don't we arrange something for Radio Sangam in the new year okay, with Apache and you? Let, let's do something, maybe a discussion, a few songs, you know, yeah, yeah. To raise some money for yeah, charity. I would love to extend this conversation. Yeah, let's do let, let, I mean, I'm here to talk about things and make things happen. Yeah, support, support maybe something with the Academy and Sangam. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if there's something, anything something. that we can do to help and support you, yeah. Uh, just let us know because you know, gone, are the, gone, gone are the days where it's just an interview. This is a conversation, and we're going to take it further. Not, we don't, do. not waiting for the next song to come out to talk. No. We've got things to do for the community. I have passion. Together, we're stronger. Unity is strength. That's what Definitely. it's all about. Definitely. I love you, Mick. Thank you to all the song, no thank all the listeners, thank all you. the people behind the scenes. Look out for the album. Remember, it's more than 27th just the November. Movie. It came out, people, so make sure that yeah. you get hold of it. I've listened to about two other tracks. Amazing. It just took me back. And um, I'm going to get a chance, hopefully get a chance today, if the missus doesn't get a hold of it first, uh, to <laughs> listen to the rest. Um, Radio Sangam really, really appreciates the, fact that, appreciates the fact that you're here with us. Thank you so much. Uh, honest, you've really made Thank my you. day today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Same way. Um, God bless everyone. Be safe for Christmas. Be safe, be safe, be safe. Don't break the rules. Enjoy yourself. New Year is going to be good, so we have to make it special. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to Sangam. And I'm your friend, Apache Indian. Check me out at Apache Indian HQ Instagram. God bless you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Take care. See you soon.